Hi, this is Vanessa again, and here is our news for today. Australia wants to strengthen bilateral ties with Timor Leste and commits to Timorese economic sovereignty. Australia's Foreign Minister Penny Wong held a bilateral meeting with East Timor President José Ramos Horta on Wednesday, August 31st. During a news conference in the East Timor capital, Delhi, Wong reiterated Australia's commitment to East Timor's economic sovereignty. I spoke to him about Australia wanting uh, to ensure we are a, a, a reliable partner, a partner who listens, a partner who works with the the government and people of Timor Leste for your sovereignty and for your economic security. I'm deeply grateful for him spending time with me today. Her comment comes as the steamer awaits their ASEAN membership, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, a political and economic union of 10 member states in Southeast Asia, to which the nation applied in 2011. East Timor currently holds observer status. Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese said in an address to the National Press Club in Canberra that he will host a visit from President Ramos Orta in the coming period without providing dates. Istimor also hopes the Australian government support plans for gas from the massive Greater Sunrise of Shorefield to be processed in Timor rather than Darwin. Greater Sunrise lies in waters between Istimor and Australia and holds an estimated 3.3 trillion cubic feet of gas, which the Timorese urgently want to develop as the impoverished nation's main revenue source, the Bayou Undang oil and gas field, is set to stop producing this year. Istimor's National Authority of Petroleum and Minerals President Florentino Pereira said he expects Canberra will back its push to pipe Greater Sunrise gas to be a proposed hub on the country's south coast to help ensure regional stability. A passenger ship engulfed by fire in the Philippines. A fire broke out at a passenger ship carrying 82 people near the coast of Batangas province, south of Manila. Footage released by the Philippine Coast Guard shows the flames engulfing MV Asia Philippines, which was carrying 48 passengers and 34 crew. The ship, which has a maximum carrying capacity of 402 passengers, was heading to Batangas port from Calapan port in Oriental Mindoro province when it caught fire about one nautical mile off the Batangas Anchorage area. According to the Philippine Coast Guard, a total of 73 people have so far been rescued, while search and rescue operations continue for the nine people missing. Rohingya refugees in Bangladesh demand justice before they back to Myanmar. <laughs> Myanmar Rohingya refugees protest for the rights of citizens before they return to Burma because they have lived in the camps of Bangladesh for five years since the start of the brutal military crackdown in Myanmar which forced more than 730,000 people to flee across the border. Now we want justice. For the last five years, we have been saying the same thing to the people of the world, but no one listened to us. Today, we're again demonstrating just to let the world know that we want justice. We are now ready to go back to Myanmar, but our demand is that we must get our citizenship rights. If they agree, we are ready to go back. Bangladesh is not our soil. We don't want to stay here. If we go, we will not stay in camps in Myanmar. We want to go straight to our homes. The vast majority fled to the Bangladeshi border town of Cox's Bazar during a military crackdown in 2017 that the United Nations has said was carried out with genocidal intent. Meanwhile, Myanmar denies a genocide, saying it was waging a legitimate campaign against insurgents who attacked police posts. More than a million Rohingya are living in squalid camps in southern Bangladesh, comprising the world's largest refugee settlement, with little prospect of returning to Myanmar, where they are mostly denied citizenship and other rights. Malaysians welcome court decision sending former Prime Minister to jail for 12 years. Malaysia's top court ordered former Prime Minister Najib Razak to begin a 12-year prison sentence after upholding a guilty conviction on charges related to a multi-billion dollar graft scandal at State Fund 1 Malaysia Development Berhard. The federal court ruling caps the stunning downfall of Najib, 
who until four years ago governed Malaysia with an iron grip and suppressed local investigations of the 1MDB scandal that has implicated financial institutions and high-ranking officials worldwide. Najib 69 was found guilty by a lawyer court in July 2020 of criminal breach of trust, abuse of power and money laundering for illegally receiving about 10 million from SRC International, a former unit of 1MDB. He had been out on bail and pending appeals. The former premier who pleaded not guilty was sentenced to 12 years jail and a 210 million ringgit or 46.84 million dollar fine. Singapore LGBTQ advocate says door to marriage equality should remain open. LGBTQ advocacy group Ogachaga told Reuters that some younger members of the community hope the doors to marriage equality will remain open after Singapore's Prime Minister said there were no plans to change the legal definition of marriage as being between a man and a woman. LGBTQ group welcomed Lee's decision to repeal Section 377A, a colonial era law inherited from the British when Singapore was a colony. I think by and large people do feel that it is something that they welcome. Um, a lot of people told me that it's long overdue. Um, some people do feel that um, a lot more can be done. Uh, some people feel that um, when the Prime Minister also talked about pr safeguarding the marriage itself, uh, they were really curious what, would be, what that means and people are still waiting for answers for that. Some in the LGBTQ community expressed fears that any upcoming debate in Parliament on repealing Section 377A and the definition of marriage in Singapore could stir up a heated vitriol from both ends of the camp. I'm also very aware that the younger population, the younger members of the LGBTQI community sees that it's something that is important for them. Um, and the doors to that possibility should not be closed. And I do hope that the Singapore government and the parliamentarians, when they debate um, about this issue in the coming months, they are fully aware that the needs of the Singapore population will change be it five or ten years down the road, it will change because we are shaped largely by how the world has progressed. Singapore was the latest Asian country to move towards ending discrimination against members of the LGBTQ community. South Korea delivers 25 BP rate hike to combat inflation. South Korea's central bank raised its key interest rate by a quarter percentage point as expected in a bid to contain inflation and prevent capital outflows as the United States Federal Reserve gears up for more hikes. The Bank of Korea raised its benchmark policy rate by 25 basis points to 2.50%, resuming normal-sized increments after delivering an unprecedented 50 basis point hike in July to curb inflation now at an almost 25-year high. The bank also upgraded this year's inflation forecast to 5.2% from 4.5%, which will to be the fastest rate since 1998, and cut its projections for economic growth to 2.6% this year from 2.7% previously. It sees growth slowing to 2.1% in 2023. Japan pledged 30 billion in Africa aid at Tunis summit. Japan pledged $30 billion in aid for development in Africa, saying it wants to work more closely with the continent, with the rule-based international order under threat of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Prime Minister Fumio Kishida said Tokyo would work to ensure grain shipments to Africa amid a global shortage. Kishida said the $30 billion will be delivered over three years, promising smaller sums for food security in coordination with the African Development Bank. The summit has given Tunisian President Kai Saeed his biggest international platform since his 2019 election and comes after he seized broad powers, formerly enshrined through a constitution referendum, a move his critics call a coup. Afghan refugees rebuilt lives in South Korea a year after Taliban takeover. over. 
a year after nearly 400 Afghan refugees fled the Taliban takeover of their homeland to settle in South Korea, many have swept white-collar dreams for factory jobs amid the struggle with language and cultural challenges as they built their new lives. South Korea helped to evacuate Afghan families as Kabul fell to the Taliban in August 2021, permitting them long-term stays in return for having work on its projects in the war-ravaged mountainous nation. Family, your, your, your hometown. A journalism graduate of the elite Kabul University, who formerly worked with the Korean provincial reconstruction team in Afghanistan, Azimi, now packs plastic products. Azimi said, expressing gratitude to South Korea for helping them escape the Taliban which carped the rights of women and girls in particular after it toppled the Western-backed government. However, cultural differences are sometimes evident in a country where many still believe in ethnic homogeneity. Government figures show only 3.2% of South Korea's total population in 2021 were foreigners. Some Korean parents also held a protest against the entry of Afghan children in local schools when they first arrived last year. And that's the whole news for today. Enjoy your weekend. Stay safe, stay healthy. See you.